Hello, and welcome back to XRP Vault, where we bring you the most recent and intriguing XRP news. We're giving away 10,000 XRP to those who are watching. All you have to do is upvote. Subscribe, comment, XRP is king, and watch the video to the end to be eligible. The winners will be picked next month and publicized on the community page of the channel. We now learned what the SECC wants the library's findings to be for their violation of securities law, which was revealed for the first time. I want to discuss that in this video since this is utterly ludicrous. I also want to discuss the SEC's defenses. John D. is getting involved in this situation and claiming that secondary sales of the LBC token are not securities transactions because they also want to discuss two issues that have been on the minds of the XRP community for a while. Many folks have inquiries concerning ISO 200-2 and the Claudius men. If they're still going on, boys, I want you to know how important they are and that it's something you'll absolutely want to watch. Guys, this is just crazy. So I want to start off this video by discussing how libraries feel that the SACC is attempting to give them something. I'd like to start by displaying a tweet from James K. Filant, and he said that the SEC is asserting that, in the circumstances, a fine equivalent to library's whole gain of $22 million is fair and reasonable. James K. went on to suggest that the SEC wants to destroy cryptocurrency in the United States rather than regulate it because the firm library shouldn't be held accountable for every single LLBC transaction ever done by library, as the SEC is arguing in this case. And $22 million is the total. Guys, this is simply and utterly ludicrous. In no way is the library in a position to pay this fine. And the SEC is simply dumping everything into a library. It manifests the SEC's primary goal in this situation. And this, according to James K.'s filing, is intended to drive libraries out of business rather than to protect small investors. I also want to show you what a library has to say about this since it demonstrates how the CC about this SEC is actively attempting to destroy library. Perhaps because they are in direct competition with various centralized social media platforms like YouTube. But pay attention to this. IOS paid a fine equal to five of its revenue. Additionally, the SEC is demanding two hundreds of library sales. Yes, four hundred times. Furthermore, the SEC sincerely desires to destroy cryptocurrency. But in our instance, they recognize that it posed a threat to social media censorship. This is completely ridiculous, guys. The SEC is outright trying to obliterate libraries. And this example really demonstrates how the SEC is targeting libraries in particular when compared to IOS. The SEC is attempting to persuade the judge not to rule on secondary sales, which is another extremely intriguing revelation we found from their submission. Yes, he openly admits that the goal of John D. and their involvement in this lawsuit was to convince the court that LBC traded on the secondary market is not a Library of Congress security and the SEC is determined to prevent this at any cost. To maintain ambiguity in the market, they are requesting that the judge refrain from ruling on secondary transactions. Otherwise, the SEC would be pursuing secondary sales, which are most likely not securities transactions. The SEC is attempting to persuade the court not to rule on the transactions because a decision would protect secondary holders of the LBC token and would serve as yet another evidence of how little concern the SEC has for individual investors. However, the SEOC has made the decision to stop that from happening at all costs. Guys, 
it's difficult to anticipate whether or not something will occur. In the end, the judge will decide whether or not to rule on secondary sales. Now, this judge made a terrible decision for Liberia right away. I therefore have some doubts about what he will do. The good news is that John D. was let into the case for this reason, so perhaps he will rule on secondary sales, or at least force the SEC to clarify its stance so we can actually make some progress and demonstrate that a digital asset itself, the token, is not a security. I'm selling it because I want to discuss migrating to ESO 20022 next. The XRP community has been talking a lot about this, but we recently heard from a Ripple insider who explained why Ripple considers this to be so crucial. Guys, let's make things pretty straightforward. However, I'd like to start by just displaying this chart to you to demonstrate that the migration of many banks to ISO 202 is currently in progress. And he thoroughly explains to us why this is so crucial for Ripple. And I believe that this is a viewpoint that not many people have shared, as Bob Way claims that the primary reason why this is crucial for Ripple is because many of the smaller institutions won't be able to afford making this shift. Evidently, it requires a lot of software. You will need to hunt for new solutions and software providers who are in compliance with ESO 2022 because many smaller banks won't be able to develop software that complies with ISO 200 to 2. Guys, P and AL are both ISO 200 to 2 compliant, along with employing Xer and RippleNet. Therefore, when these small banks upgrade their payment infrastructure to take into consideration this new banking standard, Ripple will be one of their first options. The main issue that has to be examined is why the smaller banks chose to adopt Ripple. And gentlemen, the answer to that is actually rather simple. Ripple is far less expensive than any other available choice and the more established options. Transfers may be made for pennies on the dollar and in a fraction of a second using XRP. The same may be said about any other technology that exists now. The system upgrades required by smaller banks to comply with this new messaging requirement. They will search for the best available option. And as of now, Ripple's technology enables them to be the best available answer. Additionally, Bob White goes on to say that the main reason we haven't seen this is because banks are so cautious and require certainty regarding XRP because their court systems are still compliant. They'll put off making this modification until the very last minute. However, he seems to believe that as this develops and banks are compelled to transfer, there will be a significant incentive for Ripple adoption. And gentlemen, I am really looking forward to moving on and talking about something else that has really captured the XRP community's attention over the past couple of years. Furthermore, Cody is as Cody. This project is really difficult. However, it effectively just adds native smart contracts to the XRP ledger. David Schwartz actually stated earlier today that he thought Claudius was absolutely dead and that no one was working on it. Well, guys, the best thing about the Exerpol being a decentralized platform is that anyone can build anything. And just as David Schwartz made that announcement, we received a tweet from Scott Chamberlain, the CEO of Evernote, who stated that the company was founded because Cody wasn't able to meet our needs. Cody offers decentralized hosting and payment agnosticism, with a native token serving as both a form of payment and money. Evernote is a decentralized hosting network that offers consensus as a service. So, people, let me summarize what Scott Chamberlain just said. Sincerely told, I'm struggling mightily to comprehend it. The coolest aspect of the XRP ledger, according to God Chamberlain, is that Evernote is constructing a more potent version of CODIS. 
David Schwartz believed CODIS had passed away. Scott Chamberlain then appears and claims, no, we're actually constructing a more potent version of it. Because this is fantastic beyond words. This is a project that I have a hunch you'll want to pay special attention to. A global permissionless layer, two smart contract platform can emerge from the XRP ledger in the middle to late of 2023. If we look at Evernote and Twitter, guys, this is a lot of fun. This might end up being one of the largest projects ever created for the XRP ledger. I have a feeling and I'll be paying very close attention to this one. The XRP getting native smart contracts would lead to an explosion of value, which is why I am so thrilled about it. Let's see what happens now, guys. The Clodius vision was still very much alive and strong, but I simply found it to be so amazing that David Schwartz, one of the most significant developers on the XRP ledger, had no knowledge. In fact, a stronger version of it was under construction. In order to conclude this movie and engage in a little bit of speculation, something I've been wanting to do for the past few months, it demonstrates how decentralized and significant the XRP ledger is as a technology. And folks, this has been really intriguing for Brad Garlinghouse, who currently has 589 followers. And folks, if you think this is simply a coincidental event, you can actually discover other posts that he has liked that essentially say, Hey Brad, we noticed you were following 589 people. By looking through his liked posts, Brad Garlinhouse is aware that viewers are viewing this thus. You also exceeded 589. It is also tracked via Twitter status, guys. So I explicitly went back to it after that. I find it quite fascinating that David Schwartz is so close to reaching 985 followers as David Schwartz has given the XRP community numerous puzzles. His name is Tops. His name is Bottoms. Why is there a coincidence then? Guys, we know the old riddle bearable man 123,321. What are the possibilities that Brad Garlinghouse and David Schwartz are truly set to go to 589 followers and 589 followers and 589 followers just backwards? Is everything here just a Are they attempting to alert us that something very significant is going to occur? Guys, we are aware that the XRP price chart is currently in a crucial stage. This overwhelming pushback has been beating us down for more than two years, and we've just crossed over these three-year resistance levels because the XRP price will need to move here at the exact same time that Brad Garlinghouse and David Schwartz appear to be trying to communicate something to us. They have already given signals. Not only that, but they have admitted it. Please share your thoughts with me if you find this intriguing. Is this merely an absurd coincidence? Or are they attempting to warn us that something significant is about to happen? Please let me know what you think in the comment box below.